Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through satisfiability. First, we will be going through satisfiability. Then we will be going to reduction. After that, we will be going through NP hard and NP complete definitions, guys. These three, these three four topics are really important, guys, because these three four topics will be given as even as LAQs in some kind of examinations. So please make sure that you are perfect with the concepts. So. I'll be giving you an overview guys because I'm also I also didn't find much theory or much explanation about these concepts so I'll also give you an introduction for them so that you can refer a textbook or somewhere and you can write it on your own okay so basically satisfiability satisfiability is nothing but when you are solving a particular problem okay if you are solving one more problem so if these two problems are having some similarities if this problem is solved indirectly this problem is also solved with the help of this solution right so this concept is also called as reduction also will be using this exact concept and in satisfiability we'll be comparing them guys okay so basically satisfiability can be represented in two ways that is nothing but cnf and dnf but basically we will be using cnf to represent them in this chapter okay that is nothing but conjunctive normal form so conjunctive normal form is nothing but in between we will be having or operation and in between these or operation elements will be having and operations okay so if you take the possible combinations that is nothing but x1 x2 x3 so we can say that how many ways can you represent the combination guys so i will be asking you a simple question how many ways can you represent a combination so i will be just explaining you with the help of these combinations only I will be establishing a relation between Boolean algebra like zeros, ones, zeros, ones like you will be writing in truth tables, right? So with this, I will be establishing a relation with the state space tree, guys, in which we discussed in our previous chapter, state space tree, okay? So I hope now you are thinking that, okay, how can I do it? So basically, we all know that for three elements, that is x1, x2, x3, we are having eight combinations, that is nothing but 2 power 3, that is 8, so 2 power n. So we are having eight combinations. So I have just listed them out here. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, top four zeros, top four below four ones. Okay. Okay. So now for this, I'll be constructing a state based tree. So if you assume here, each path is having a particular flow. So that is what these all eight elements are. So that is nothing but initially among X1, I'll be selecting one and zero. Okay. At x2, here I will be selecting 1 and 0 and here also I will be selecting 1 and 0. So now we are done with 4 paths. Whereas at the end I will be selecting 2, 2, 2, 2. At the end we have reached the 8 different paths, the exact path of this. So indirectly we have established the relation between these two. So now if one problem is solved, the other will also be solved. So that is the main logic behind this. So you need to find some similarities between them. And you, you will be trying to solve one and you can solve anything. So... For the above CNF and also for SnapSack and there are many other possibility algorithms guys. For these things we, for state based diagrams we have drawn for multiple algorithms in our previous chapter, right? Okay. So, the we can say that if the satisfiability problem is solved in polynomial time using same concept, we can solve other related problems too. Okay, so basically if one problem is solved with the help of satisfiability, that is nothing but the state space tree or any kind of boolean algebra or any kind of method using it if you solve it in polynomial time then all the algorithms which belongs to that kind of sector will all be solved guys okay so this whole process of satisfac satisfiability which i have just told you will be considered in considered in deduction so basically deriving deriving from one to another so basically if i say the first algorithm is really hard so based if something is based on the first algorithm like it is almost similar then indirectly this algorithm is also tough right indirectly for students right yes so similarly here also we will be deriving one from the another so satisfiability is directly proportional to the zero by one knapsack so we are assuming both are equal in some instance so that is the reason why i wrote instance instance one instance two if it is solved in polynomial time then this can also be solved in the polynomial time so basically, I hope everyone knows that the satisfiability problem will lie in between the NP. Okay, I'll be just showing you the graph so that it will be clear. So it will be become, it will be in between NP and NP hard. Okay, so here we will be having the satisfiability problem. 
that is the reason why the satisfiability problem comes under np complete so this uh, component or interior or in intersection will be the complete np complete okay so you can also say that uh, satisfiability belongs to np hence we can say that 0 by 1 also belongs to knapsack sorry 0 by 1 also belongs to np hard but satisfiability also belongs to np complete as it is non deterministic algorithm because there is no solution for it just you will be assuming that okay by doing this 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 you will be getting the answer that's it so that is the reason why this also comes under non deterministic so hence you can draw a small graph like this so now we will be discussing about the concept of np hard and np complete definitions guys so basically np hard an algorithm which follows or can be solved by basics of satisfiability or any other instance similarly then it can come under np hard so if you remember i pushed np into np hard that is nothing but 0 by 1 knapsack because in our previous example we are, we assumed that both are equal and if one is solved the other is also solved so indirectly you can say that 0 by 1 knapsack also belongs to np hard okay so now your question will be np complete so if it has a non deterministic polynomial time algorithm so now you know that 0 by 1 knapsack belongs to np hard so now you start writing the non deterministic algorithm for this so if you write non deterministic algorithm it will move to here if you convert that determin non deterministic algorithm into deterministic it will it will push into polynomial polynomial time okay so that is the main concept be behind p np and inside np we are having two those are nothing but np hard and np complete okay so now we are done with the introduction part of this chapter guys so in the next lecture we will be going through cook's theorem okay so cook's stated that we can say that polynomial time and non polynomial time are both equal so that is what he has stated guys so we will be discussing some kind of introduction of the theorem because i i didn't find the theorem the exact theorem i didn't find anywhere so i will be just introducing the theorem and we will be we will be as we will be going through some assumptions okay so in the next lecture we will be continuing with cook's theorem thank you thanks for watching